I don't know why I chose to film this one. It's about a rain, but let's get right into it. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Today, we are going to be comparing two super trainers on the market right now, which is the Nike Zoom Fly 6, which I actually just reviewed recently, versus the Brooks Hyperion Max 2. So let's get right into it. So I wanted to quickly start off this comparison by saying that the reason I'm comparing these two shoes are that both of them are kind of daily trainers or trainers with plates in them. The Brooks Hyperion Max 2 has a P-Bax plate, which we'll get more into in the midsole section of the comparison, whereas the Nike Zoom Fly 6 has a full length carbon plate. But essentially these are both trainers that have plates in them. That's why I'm comparing them. And they are at similar price points with the Brooks being $180 and the Nike Zoom Fly 6 being $170. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the comparison. So starting out with the traction on both both of these shoes. The outsole for both of these shoes I think work perfectly fine as long as you're running in dry conditions on the road, which is typically where I ran in both of these shoes. I live in California and even though it's about to rain, um, this I guess weather just started and when I tested both of these shoes, it didn't rain at all. So I didn't really have a good chance to run in wet conditions, but in dry weather conditions on the road, you're gonna be fine in both of these. Now I do wanna note that both of these shoes aren't probably the best traction that I've had in running shoes. That award would probably go to Puma and Adidas with Puma Grip as well as Adidas Continental Rubber. But with that being said, if you are running on the road in dry weather conditions, you're gonna be totally fine as long as you're not trying to cross someone up in basketball or you know, I don't know, do some zigzag drills for football. I think you're gonna be fine in both of these shoes. When it comes to off-road, you know, if you're running on pebbles or dirt, I, again, will stand by it where the traction maybe is not the best in both of these shoes. I have ran in other road running shoes that have a little bit better traction that I would feel a little bit more confident in if I were to run on some loose gravel or dirt roads. These two shoes would get the job done, but you might slip here and there, especially if you're going downhill or you're making quick turns. Now, quickly touching on durability, I have a little bit over 30 miles on the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 and a little bit under 30 miles, I believe 29 miles on the Nike Zoom Fly 6. And as for durability, I feel that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is holding up just a touch better than the Nike Zoom Fly 6. And the reason I say that is because on the waffle pattern of Nike's outsole, I can see a couple of the nubs wearing off. So that's something to note that could be, you know, maybe my heel strike pattern or me misstepping in the shoe. But I did notice that there were some nubs that rubbed off on the Nike Zoom Fly 6. Now on the Brooks Hyperion Max 2, this outsole honestly looks brand new to me. It doesn't look like it's worn much at all. It is a little bit harder of an outsole to see how much wear is on. So that could be a factor as well. But there was a texture on the bottom of this outsole and that texture is slowly fading away now. So I, if I had to eyeball it, I would say that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 has a touch better durability than the Nike Zoom Fly 6, but that's also me just speculating. Again, I have around 30 miles on each shoe, and I would just say that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 has a little bit better durability when it comes to the outsole. Now moving on to the main event of these two shoes. The Brooks Hyperion Max 2, as I said before, has a P-Bax plate with 36 millimeters of DNA flash foam in the heel dropping to 30 millimeters in the forefoot giving it a six millimeter heel to toe drop whereas the nike zoom fly 6 has 42 millimeters of zoom x foam and sro2 foam dropping to 34 millimeters in the forefoot of the shoe with a full length carbon plate now this is where it gets interesting because i feel that the brooks hyperion max 2 definitely feels lower to the ground due to that lesser stack height than these Nike Zoom Fly 6. And I also do wanna note that the p plate in the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 just makes the shoe feel a little bit smoother and not as aggressive than the Nike Zoom Fly 6. Now, is that a bad thing? I think that's gonna be up to your personal preference and as to what you're going to be using the shoe for. Since I have the luxury of having both of these shoes, I would personally say for these cushion setups, I feel a little bit more comfortable in the Nike Zoom Fly 6 due to that extra stack height, especially since I'm training for a full marathon. And if I were to choose one shoe or the other for a long run, I'm gonna take that extra stack height every day of the week, especially with that carbon plate that makes it a little bit easier to run faster in. Now, with that being said, the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is no slouch at all. I think that this is a phenomenal setup still. And I think that there is a use case for the Brooks Hyperion Max 2. Now, I do prefer these shoes when I'm not trying to pick up the pace as much as in the Nike Zoom Fly six when I am at the slower paces or maybe marathon pace especially for shorter runs or half marathon and below
low runs, I do find myself reaching for the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 a little bit more as it just doesn't feel as aggressive as the Nike Zoom Fly 6. And I think that that is very helpful, especially when you're trying not to push the pace too much or you're not trying to run too fast. I think the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is just a little bit more subtle. Both shoes have a nice rocker, but even with the rocker and the P-Bax plate and the foam, I still feel that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is better suited for if you want to do a wide variety of paces. So talking about the feel of both of these shoes, as I said, the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is a little bit less aggressive and the Nike Zoom Fly 6 is a little bit more aggressive with a little bit more stack height. I would say that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 is a little bit firmer of a foam as well as a not very lively foam. Now you can see that any way that you want. You can see it as a positive or a negative, but in my opinion, I think that Brooks did a good job in keeping this shoe pretty stable as well as pretty consistent throughout your entire run. So even though it doesn't have as much stack height as maybe the Nike Zoom Fly 6, it still will provide you with ample impact protection and you're gonna get a lot of smooth and nice transitions for your runs. Now with the Zoom Fly 6, as I said in my review, this shoe is very exciting to run in and it definitely makes you want to run a little bit faster or encourage you to run a little bit faster due to that carbon plate as well as the Nike Zoom X foam in the shoe. I think that this shoe is just super, super fun to run in, especially if you wanna run fast or you wanna run long. I think this shoe is gonna help you a lot. So if I were to compare these two midsoles apples to apples for the same run, I would say that I would prefer the Nike Zoom Fly 6. That could be due to me being a bigger runner at 200 pounds. I think that me being a little bit heavier, I do enjoy that extra stack height. And I think that this shoe is just so unique in that the geometry of the midsole as well as the foam and the carbon plate, I think just make it really easy to run fast and run long and maybe not feel as fatigued as a more traditional shoe like the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 where maybe it doesn't have a carbon plate which is, you know, just the P-Bax plate, and the, the foam is a little bit more subtle feeling than the Zoom Fly 6. So if I were to pick one or the other setup, I would say the Nike Zoom Fly 6 wins for me in the cushioning department. Now moving on to the uppers and fits of both of these shoes, I think that both of these shoes are pretty well-fitting shoes. Now, I do wanna preface this by saying that I have both size 12s in my hand right now for both shoes, and I got them in the medium or regular width category. Now, I wear a size 12, and I do have a little bit wider than average foot, but I typically just wear normal size 12s in all of my running shoes, and that's no different in these. With the fit, I would say that both of these run true to size. The Nike Zoom Fly 6 runs just like a lot of other Nike running shoes, so whatever Nike size you typically get in your Nike running shoes, I would say get the same one. It's gonna fit you like a glove and fit you very well. Now, with the Brooks Hyperion Max 2, I would say that it does run standard to Brooks sizing as well, but I think in in my experience with Brooks, you're gonna get a little bit of extra room in the forefoot, which is nice for the wide footers. I did feel that this specific shoe, the Brooks Hyperion Max 2, had a little bit of room in the toe box in lengthwise. Now, I think it's just kind of a placebo effect or I don't know what to call it, but it just, it's all in my head where it feels a little bit of a longer shoe, but when I press my fingers on the tip of the toe box, my toes are basically still there. So it does fit true to size in my opinion. Speaking of fit, the lockdown on both of these is pretty solid. The Nike Zoom Fly 6 does have a better lockdown for me. I do wanna know I've also put runner's loops on both of these shoes, and I just think that the Nike Zoom Fly 6 locks in my heel a little bit better than the Hyperion Max 2. Now the Hyperion Max 2 locks in my heel with the runner's loop perfectly fine, but I will say that if I had to nitpick, that would be something that I didn't really prefer in the shoe. It was secure, but I felt that the heel cup wasn't suctioned to my heel. Um, and that's, I guess, me being very picky and I have ran in a lot of shoes, but the heel lockdown is just not perfect. I would say it's okay or average. It definitely gets the job done, but I do want a one-to-one -one fit, especially if I'm running faster or if I'm running longer. So I think that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2's lockdown is only average, if not a little bit below average, but I would still say get your true size if you're interested in this shoe. Now, when it comes to materials, I think that Brooks killed it, honestly, on the Hyperion Max 2. They do say it's a mesh on their website, but it kind of feels or and also looks like a knitted material, which I personally really like. This colorway is also sick, by the way. Um, doesn't have anything to do with performance. And um, it also has a knitted, gusseted tongue. And I thought that the midfoot fit or feel of this shoe was just second to none. I think that they killed it 
The tongue is extremely comfortable and the lacing setup works very well. I also really like the ribbed laces on this shoe. So overall, the upper on the Brooks Hyperion Max 2, again, the fit and heel lockdown is maybe not the best, but I think that the materials are very comfortable. I really like the laces and I think that the midfoot lockdown is very good in the shoe as well as just the materials used on this shoe. I think it was a very good upper. So if fit is very important to you, maybe the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 won't be for you, but I will say that you should try on the shoe as everyone's foot is shaped differently, heels, whatnot. Everyone's anatomy is a little bit different. So even though this shoe didn't fit me perfectly, maybe it will fit you perfectly. So definitely try these on in store. When it comes to the upper and the materials on the Nike Zoom Fly 6, I think that this feels more like a fuse, um, kind of like a plasticky mesh and it's double layered. And I think that it's an okay upper. I wouldn't say that it's anything revolutionary. It does have a little bit of a gusseted thin tongue as well, which didn't really bother me. But I think that the standout was just the overall fit for the Zoom Fly 6. I think it's a little bit above average in my opinion. It fits my foot really well. The heel lockdown is superb and I think that just the whole upper is very light as well. I do want to note that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2's upper is light too but just feel on foot. I think the Zoom Fly 6 feels a little bit lighter. Now when it comes to ventilation on both of these shoes I think that they're both okay. I, I wouldn't say that they're above average or below average. I'd say that they're both in the middle for ventilation so if ventilation is a huge deal to you and you're picking between these two shoes, I think you're going to be fine either way. So overall, I would say that the upper on the Nike Zoom Fly 6 just fit better and performed better. But I think the Brooks Hyperion Max 2's upper felt a little bit better, but the fit just wasn't as good. So overall, I would have to give the upper and fit to the Nike Zoom Fly 6. And that's going to conclude my comparison of the Nike Zoom Fly 6 versus the Brooks Hyperion Max 2. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have either of these or if you're looking at either of these and which one you're leaning more towards. Personally, I think that the Nike Zoom Fly 6 was just phenomenal. I think it fit my foot perfectly. I think with the use cases that I'm going to put this shoe in, I think that it's overall a little bit better of a shoe for me. Now, the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 still has a spot in my rotation just because, like I said, the Zoom Fly 6 is a little bit more aggressive and it's more for maybe my longer runs versus the Brooks Hyperion Max 2. I kind of see it as a plated trainer, but still something that I could wear daily. But whereas the Zoom Fly 6, I wouldn't want to wear this shoe for every single run because I think I would start running too fast and I wouldn't recover properly. And you know, there's that whole thing about not wearing too many plated shoes all the time. So both of these shoes are phenomenal shoes. I think at the price points, as well with that in consideration at $180 the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 and $170 the Zoom Fly 6. I think that the Zoom Fly 6 is a little bit better of a value. You get a little bit more stack height as well as $10 cheaper than the Brooks Hyperion Max 2. But then again, value is kind of subjective. I think everyone is a little bit different when it comes to value and it really depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that can do every type of run and kind of like a hybrid shoe, I think that the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 might fit, you know, fit those needs better. I would say ideally half marathon on and below. I think that this shoe is going to be perfect for you. I think you can still run a full marathon in this shoe, but it's maybe going to be a little bit lackluster in the cushioning department, or it might get painful in those later miles due to maybe not having that full carbon plate or that 40 millimeter stack height. Whereas the Zoom Fly 6, I think is more of an aggressive shoe, a speedier shoe as the name suggests. And I think that this shoe is gonna be really, really good for training runs, fast runs, long runs, as well as possibly race day. I think that I would be able to run a full marathon in these and they are aggressive enough where I feel like I can maybe achieve a personal best in the marathon. Um, so that's gonna pretty much conclude my comparison. I think if I were to choose a winner, I would choose the Nike Zoom Fly 6, but then again, these two shoes are a little bit different from each other. They are both plated, but they do feel very different on foot. So that's gonna pretty much wrap up my comparison. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and stay tuned for more comparisons as well as shoe reviews and any running related content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.